What's going on guys, I'm Anstey Maze. Uh, back in September of this year, Season 2 of the Pokemon Sun and Moon anime came to an end, aka Ultra Adventures, which lasted from Episode 44 of Dream Encounter to Episode 90, Connect to the Future, Legend of the Radio 1, and to be quite honest, it's one of my favourite seasons ever from the Pokemon anime, and it improved so much in many aspects compared to Season 1 as well. So today, I wanted to go over what I believe are the top 10 best Pokemon Sun and Moon episodes in Season 2. However, much like the previous Season 1 video I made, I am not alone for this list. I am joined with a special guest. What's up Lumios Trainers? Lumios Trainer Zach here. And like Ben said, I'm here today to help him count down the top 10 best Pokemon Sun and Moon Season 2 episodes. It was such a cool season. However, this is actually part 2 of our collab. If you want to see what numbers 10 through 6 are, then be sure to head over to my channel now or after this video where we go over those episodes. Link is in the description. Indeed it will. Before we begin counting down this list again though, I have to remind you lot that this list will be based on our opinions. So please respect ours and we shall respect yours in the comments down below. We would love to hear your personal favourite list. But with the intro now said, let's not waste any more time and jump right into this list. Number 5, Episode 63. Ho 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 ho. Despite Litten being in the shadows for quite a while before this episode aired, this episode gave it the much deserved development it needed, while also introducing the incredible Mask Royale to us. Both of them combining together to make two fantastic battles and overall story. Basically, Litten got quite intrigued by the Mask Royals and Cinderella once watching it battle on TV. And once the opportunity arises for anybody to battle against Incineroar, it wastes no time to make sure it will be the one to battle against it. However, it got wrecked pretty hard against Incineroar, which the moves we got to see coming from Incineroar were quite spectacular. We saw it perform a stunning Darkest Lariat to then throw Chop Litten in the air, which for that exact moment made me go ooh out loud as it was quite brutal yet also a stupendous attack. Because of this loss though, we then move on to a fantastic training montage of Ash and Litten training and eventually once they felt more powerful than ever before, Ash and Nate rechanged from Mask Riel to a battle, which she actually comes to them at Ash's house. In this rematch, Litten surprisingly nearly got destroyed, his face being clenched in Incineroar's bulky, meaty paws once again. However, this is where Litten also hears a really motivational speech coming from Ash which allows it to evolve into Toracat, learn Flame Charge and spam the hell out of it against Incineroar in a very fast paced scene. Which despite it being spammed like I stated, and even quite a short scene, it was certainly a very thrilling, breathtaking moment. This is where I jumped out of my chair, feeling an exhilaration run down my spine. It was that impressive. I love how Toracat still loses the battle despite evolving, as usually the Pokemon would then win. But nope, the anime goes out of its way to show us the imposing power of Incineroar and that Ash and Toracat still have a long way to come until they defeat them. That being one hell of a magnificent rivalry and story. So altogether, I would say that this episode was definitely one hell of an excellent banger. Number 4, Episode 49 and Episode 50. So for this number 4 spot, we actually have two episodes as you can see. Why that is, is because these episodes go hand in hand. I'll be talking about episode 49 first. Yo, what an episode it was. As you guys should know, I'm a huge Lily fanboy, so of course I'll be so invested in her anime character's overarching story, which this episode was indeed very important for her character, as she finally overcame her fear of touching Pokemon, now successfully being able to touch every single one, once learning the hard truth about her past. But she was fully revealed within this episode, but indeed an Illego tried to adopt Lily, like Gladion said back to Ash in episode 47. Although, the new thing we learn is that his soul Valley rescued Lily from this Ultra Beast, and that Lily suppressed her memories of this event. 
This giving an explanation to us of why Lily suffered her trauma of touching Pokemon once again in the previous episode, once meeting Soul Valley. It was just simply because she remembered it played a major role in the reason of why she fears touching Pokemon. Which combining all these answers made such a fulfilling conclusion to Lily's goal to overcome her fear at that moment in time. As it was one of the series' most biggest and greatest mysteries. It made me so happy to see her be so happy as well. You cannot really blame her for being frightened all these years regarding Pokemon 2 as she was only a little kid who was about to get abducted. That's very dark, yet it's also lovable because of that. The other ways this episode built up to that phenomenal conclusion too was very astounding, such as we got to witness more of Lily's relationship with her family in the past, which was very heartwarming to watch, through wonderful action, and finally, even Faber's creepy, evil character. His entire plan to erase Lily's memories within this episode was remarkable. That brings us to episode 50, which is pretty much the continuation of the previous episode. It starts off with Lily having fun playing with everybody's Pokemon. This was really great, cause now we truly see that her fear is gone. It's honestly a really sweet and touching moment. But of course, this was actually the calm before the storm, cause we had Faba in the background plotting to seal Nebby. There was so much that happened in this episode, especially during the second half of it. We got Faba succeeding in summoning an Ultra Wormhole, Nebby evolving into Cosmoem, and Nihiligo abducting Lusamine. My personal favorite part is when we see Nihiligo emerge from an Ultra Wormhole. It made things really intense. Especially when you see it in action and pretty much having no problem taking out Lusamine's Clefable, Gladion Silvalli, and Ash's Pikachu. This was such a good moment, cause it shows that the Ultra Beasts are way more powerful than the average Pokemon. And with Lusamine now gone, this gave us a great setup for the next couple of episodes, where the gang had to go to Ultra Space to save her. So this episode was awesome in the fact that it helped create the hype for what's to come. Number 3, Episode 79. If you found Episode 21 sad, then you're bound to find this one just as depressing. As oh god, it really does hit you in the feels. This episode focuses on Purple befriending a Minioth that fell from space. As usually, Minioths come to land in the Pokemon world because their shells harden after eating too much space dust. This increases their weight, hence the falling. And once they land, they then break free from their shells and return home to space. However, the Minioth that Purple be friends in this episode did not break free from its shell until the next day after the lesson Ash and his friends had on Minioth. So they decided to look after it for a while until night falls again. Purple grown the closest bond with it, which was very adorable to see. Meanwhile, throughout this entire episode 2, we witness Sophocles having flashbacks of him as a kid befriending Aminia and then suddenly becoming sad, which makes him very confused. But at the last minute, he finally remembers why he got so sad, and that is because once the Minya is sent to space, they die. I'm not joking. So, Poipo, much like Sophocles had to witness when he was a kid, watch their friend die right in front of their face, which is. Pretty dark. Bear in mind, there's hundreds of other deaths being shown on screen right now too, which is something I never thought I'd see in Pokemon. Yet it was really powerful and stunning. But focusing back on Poipo's friend, you just can't help but feel emotional when watching this death, as the entire episode was pretty much centered around Poipo and this minion having a lovely bond. It just hits you even more in the feels when Ash decides to comfort Poipo by hugging it. That was so beautiful. Even Sophocles' past is something that can hit you pretty hard, and it even gave him more justice to his character. If I could describe this episode in one word, I would say it was sensational, as the writers managed to make us care and feel for these characters in just such a short amount of time. I for sure let out some tears, and I'm 80% sure that if you haven't watched this episode yet, that you are bound to as well, for sure, I would also say this is even one of the most depressing and darkest episodes ever in the Pokemon franchise as a whole. Oh, what, what an episode. Number 2, The Ula Ula Island Dark. Oh man, these episodes were so great that we had to combine them all for one spot. 
What made them so great is the fact that they focused on Ash's trials in Ula Ula Island, with only Ace Rola as his temporary companion. It really felt like the old days when Ash had a smaller group and, you know, actually traveled. In our opinion, this made it way better than the Akala arc, especially with the fact that each episode is significant to the overall arc. For example, the first episode is all about Team Rocket getting a Z-Ring. This gave them some great progress since now this gave them the ability to use Z-Moves. The second episode is about Ash facing Nanu and losing. This was great because it's Ash's first major loss in Alola, so this gave him a reason to actually train. Then this leads to the third episode where Ash received training from Tapu Bulu, which was pretty cool. Afterwards, it's the fourth episode where Ash is assigned a pre-trial where he had to defeat Team Rocket's Mimikyu. Then finally, the last episode of the arc where Ash gets a rematch with Nanu and ends up mastering Lycanroc's red-eyed form. This mini arc came all together really well, but although the Grand Trial rematch was the climax of this arc, Ben and I both agree that our favorite is the Pikachu vs Mimikyu episode. Episode 76. The battle between these two was just awesome with very fluid animation. It was super cool to see Mimikyu Z move for the first time, and Pikachu even learned the move Electro Web for some reason. And of course, the icing on the cake, getting the return of 10 million volt Thunderbolt. Still no explanation for how that happened, but still really awesome to see. Before we move on to the number one spot, we quickly wanted to go over honorable mentions for this list. Firstly, we have episode 60, which for episode did a superb job of giving Snowy much needed development while also showing Lily other roles trainers can have in the Pokemon world, leaving a very enjoyable episode. Next up, we have episode 65, which introduced the character Elmo wonderfully, while also providing us entertaining moments such as Elmo defeating all of Team Skull just by using Extreme Evo Boost. And finally, we have episode 83, which despite it only being decent for many people, is actually by far one of my favourite filler episodes in this series, maybe even the entire franchise as a whole. As it screamed so much fun to me because of the obstacles small Ash, Lily and Sophocles had to go through. This concept of them being small overall, being very unique and different, which was extremely charming. Number 1, The Necrozma Rock Alright, with the honorable mentions out of the way, we can now talk about number 1, the Necrozma arc. What better way to end the season all about Ultra Beast than with the strongest Ultra Beast of them all? Man, does a lot happen here. It all starts in episode 87, where a small wormhole opens up, sucking the Ultra Aura of Alola and filling it with darkness. We learn that at the end of the wormhole, Necrozma is on the hunt for Lunala. Because of this, the Ultra Guardians are called into action with their newest addition, Gladion. I love me some Gladion, so you bet I was hyped to see him here. And in episode 88, it gets even better, cause we get the return of Nebi, who came to save Lunala. On top of all this chaos, we even got Giovanni's special task force here trying to get their hands on Necrozma. They didn't really do much to be honest, but it was still interesting to see them here in the action. We even got Necrozma switching between its Dawn Wings and Dusk main forms, which is not so great for Nebi and Lunala, but pretty awesome for us to see. Heading into episode 89, pretty much the entire episode focused on us finally learning what Purple's overall purpose for this season was. Ash and his friends arriving in his home world. And wow, what a story that was. I could have never predicted something along the lines of what we learned, which was that Ultra Necrozma saved Purple's home world from a devastating meteor. But at the cost of its light, it then entered a deep slumber. And without Necrozma's light, the plants in Purple's homeworld withered and the lands became desolate. So, the old parent Naginado then sent our Purple to Alola to find a new hive to live at. It was just very pleasing to learn all of this, even if me and Zack still don't find Purple to be this great character that everybody else makes it out to be. It just all gets two times better in episode 90 though, as this is where everybody in Alola then decides to send their sea power to Necrozma so it can retrieve its true form once again, even if Kahuna's helped out, which was very extraordinary. By far though, the best sea power sharing scene has to come from Ash and Gladion commanding legendary Pokemon to use their exclusive Z-moves. Very astonishing and remarkable. Towards the end of the episode, we then unfortunately had to say goodbye to Poipo, as it reveals to Ash that it wants to stay with its family, as foreshadowed back in episode 84 as well 
which Fred definitely added a melancholic side tone for a lot of people as they came to fall in love with Point Boss character. Even for me, even though I just found this character just decent. The montage of its time with Vash 2 is where it hits you in the feels the most. It was just so perfect, my favourite montage in the series as a whole. Future Connection, the opening theme, played a major factor for why it was so perfect too, as the lyrics fit alongside the scenes just superbly. Overall, with everything me and Zack have stated for this spot, hopefully you can see why we believe these are the best episodes in this entire season. Truly, to us, they were absolutely splendid. And that concludes the list. I hope you all enjoyed. I definitely had so much fun making this list alongside Sack. You said it, Ben. Thanks for having me. Before we go, though, bear in mind that this is part two of our collab. And if you still haven't seen part one, then be sure to head over to my channel to go watch it. Link is in the description, iCard, and end card. Yes, indeed it will. If you did enjoy this video, though, then be sure to consider leaving a like, a subscribe, and a share for future Pokemon content. It helps out a ton. You'll also become a member of the Entity Squad. For now, this is Entity Maze, signing out. Thank you for watching.